Hey guys, welcome to the stream. I hope everybody's having a good Friday today. So we're gonna do a little bit of resin casting. It's Friday and I had some burl chunks that I had die stabilized. We'll get these guys out, kind of show them off. Uh, I did a little bit of die stabilizing with some fun colors and there's some kind of funky pieces. They're like, uh, I, think they're, I think this is all Buckeye burl. Um, and I, so I did a little bit of kind of, what is that, like a teal and purple and we got red and yellow on that other one and we got some kind of sunsetty colors in these chunks so should be pretty fun and i know they look a little dull right now but when you add a little bit of denatured alcohol or finish or whatever uh, it'll it'll spice right up and be really vibrant so uh it'll be pretty simple what the heck is going on here i'm losing my spoons Losing my spoons, guys. Uh, it'll be pretty simple, but it'll be pretty fun. We get to play with a lot of colors. So uh, as usual, the, the first super chatters are gonna get first dibs on picking colors. So if that gives you any motivation to super chat, I really appreciate the support, uh, but it should be pretty fun. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I always like doing hybrid blanks and I, and I kind of, these are gonna end up looking kind of like resin river sort of blank type things, hybrids. So, should be pretty fun. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you, I, I kind of finished, I didn't totally finish up that egg that we did uh, yet, but I, I did re uh, kind of buff it. I, I hit it with the buffing wheels and it's a lot better. So I just, I just think that my problem is I don't really work too well with those pastes, <laughs> but this thing's pretty, pretty flawless at this point. It's, it's crystal clear. Uh, I, I still need to kind of finish up the bottom. Um, I, I parted it off, did the best that I could. Where am I at here? There, there we go. Uh, but I'm just going to need to go in and kind of sand that, you know, round it over on the, on the lathe. I'm just going to set up a little sanding, sanding wheel on the, on the lathe, kind of like a disc grinder. And just kind of round that into shape and then go through all the grits and polish the bottom. Uh, one thing that I guess we were, when I first started turning this, Doug was like, oh, you're turning it backwards. Uh, like he, he usually has it set up where the, let's see. So I was turning it where I part off the bottom of the egg. Uh, and he was saying that he flips it around. And I, and I was like, yeah, I don't know why I do that. And actually now I know why I do that because I would rather, if I'm going to have to hand, uh, you know, hand shape and, and kind of finish off the bottom or I mean, uh, you know, any part of it, I want, I'd rather have the bottom uh, that may have, it's just, it's more likely if you're just kind of hand sanding stuff to have flaws or scratches. And so that's why I do it that way. I'd rather have that on the bottom because usually you don't really see the bottom. So if there's any problems with it, then <laughs> I'm, I can kind of hide it under the stand. So I just wanted to mention that. So let's stop and see who's all here. I also have one other thing that I need to do today. I got some stickers from Bruce, Jordan, Jordan Woodworks. So uh, we'll be putting those on a pressure pot first thing, and then we'll roll into the into the, the casting. So it looks like Frank's already in, plum crazy. So I, I actually, I wanna mention one thing. So I guess that I have lots of plum crazy myself, but I guess that I don't think Caster's Choice is gonna be uh, re, re, uh, re-upping, resupplying any suppliers. That's, that's the latest thing that I heard. So uh, what I'm working with Chad to do is we're going to try and figure out what the, the exact same colors are in their eye candy uh, customs um, powders. And so I'm working with Chad and eye candy to get uh, pretty much replacements for all the, the caster's choice ones. I, I guess, I don't know. I, I think Brian ran into some, some personal issues or something. I don't know what's going on, but I don't know that they're going to actually have these same colors that we use. But, and I usually say this, you know, really these mica powders, they probably come out of one factory. So it's not like we can't find it. We just need to kind of, you know, understand which ones are the similar ones uh, with eye candy or whoever else. So um, I have tons of it left, um, but I am going to be kind of switching over to the eye candy ones and, and using those. I don't, it, it just kind of sucks. I'm put in a position where I've been using Caster's Choice for a while and I like it. It, it works fine. But, you know, now at this point, it kind of sucks because now I'm like, oh yeah, plum crazy. <laughs> we can't use that anymore because they don't have it at Turner's Warehouse and I don't think they're getting any more of it. So I don't know if that may change down the road, but I, I can't, I'm just, I'm going to switch to something else and, and kind of replace all those colors, uh, hopefully with 
uh, a brand that is not going to go anywhere. So I just want to mention that. It kind of sucks, but uh, I thought I'd mention it. So let's see who's in the chat. We got Daryl. Daryl is first. Uh, he was the first like, too. And KJT, what's up? Kim. And Dominic's here. And Jim. Mike McEwen, what's going on, man? And Steve and Doug is here, of course. Nice. Uh, let's see here. Am I missing? If I missed you, I'm sorry. Uh, Nancy is down there. And Paul. And Jeff. Let's see here. Eric's here. Is this casting of a Buckeye Burled in an alt? No. Uh, stabilizing is totally different than casting. Stabilizing, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're filling the inside cellular structure of wood or you know, whatever material it is with a resin, and, and, and this isn't a casting resin, it's a stabilizing resin, it's just a liquid, um, and, and you're, you're hardening up the fibers. Casting resins are not going to penetrate the wood in any way. It's, it's basically you're casting around you know, some other object, that's what casting resins do. So no, it doesn't do anything for stabilizing, and frankly you have to either stabilize or dry out wood to cast it anyway, um, because there's moisture in it. So um, two totally different things, stabilizing and casting. And let's see. Oh, I missed a few arts here. Nice. And let's see. We got, oh, Ann, Ann got in with the, the super chat. Thanks, Ann. Ann's here. Where I missed you up there. Oh, there you are. Nice. Oh, well, I hope your vision comes back soon, Mike. Yeah, just, just listen. Don't, don't worry about watching <laughs> the chat. <laughs> let's see here. easier to hold the fat in hmm. yeah, well that's what yeah I guess that's what I, I do I, don't know. I guess that's my, my that was my first instinct is, is to, to keep the, the bigger part near the, the, the jaws let's see here so and uh, Daryl's here I think I already saw Daryl Daryl was the f yeah Daryl was the first like Cindy's here Mark and Chad's here. So's Radio Face. All kinds of people. And Everett just showed up. Sweet. So, uh, first things first, let's get uh, uh, this, the sticker on the pressure pot. Let's see. I'm, I don't want to really change my camera setup. So, we're just going to kind of, we're just going to do this one over here. And what I'm going to do is we're going to put it on the, I'm going to pick one of these. I like the little saw blade one. So, I'm going to pick this one. And let me, I'm going to switch camera view so you can get a good look at this sticker close up. Look at that. Pretty sweet. Pretty slick looking sticker. All right. And then we'll switch back and I'm going to put it on the lid here. Actually, you know what I can do to get a kind of closer up view? I can do this. Look at that. I'm going to put it on the lid. You are going to go, let's see. Yeah, I think that'll I think that'll work pretty well right there. So I'm gonna actually wipe this off because this thing's a little bit dirty. So I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of denatured alcohol just to kind of clean clean the surface up so it doesn't just fall right off. Look at that. Cleaning my lids. Alright. And oh look, it's even got the nice little handy dandy bend and peel. Alright, here we go. You're right by my buddy Braxton in the... This one's old. Does anybody remember the Drunken Woodworker? That's, that's a, a make something now. Back in the day, David Pachuto was the Drunken Woodworker. That was kind of a joke <laughs> originally. Uh, and he's like, oh, maybe I should be serious. <laughs> so he changed it to make something. So anyway, thanks for sending me the sticker, jo uh, Bruce. I always want to say Jordan. We got to change your last name. It gets all confusing. Okay, so let's see here. So first thing we're gonna do here, we got we already got three super chats. Hey, thanks, Nancy. Um, let's do. Hmm, I'm not sure how to do these. Let's do the the three blank first. So we're gonna do one of these guys, three pin blanks, and let's just let's go for. I like these chunks. Let's, let's just, I don't know, I, I like them all, but let's just go for these ones for the first one. And so what I'm going to do here is they're just going to, I'm just going to plop them in here basically. So that's what it's going to look like in the mold. 
Uh, I need to hot glue these somehow. Um, they're, they're, they're actually pretty loose in there. So I'm gonna hot glue these guys down and then pop them back in the, the oven and then we'll start thinking about some colors here. So Frank's already got Plum Crazy. He's lined up with Plum Crazy. So we got that. Um, what am I doing? Hot glue. Hot glue gun. And I'm kind of bummed. I don't really think you can get, I, I couldn't find this DeWalt um, hot glue gun on Amazon. So I don't, I don't know where to point you guys to, to pick one of these up. I do like the thing. It seems to work good. It's, it's definitely a lot better than those cheap ones. I'm sure there's other better ones out there somewhere, but. Oh, I need to plug in my camera too. I'm wondering why I couldn't see the screen. <clears throat> and I've got the video uh, for the, the sphere. That thing's all ready to rock. So that'll be up Sunday. And I think it's going to be a pretty good video. I think you guys might like it. I don't know. I liked it. It seemed like a decent video. <laughs> Let's see here. Yeah, no, it's not like so stabilized wood. It's it's yeah, pla it's kind of like plasticizing it. You're using a a resin. It's a super thin liquid resin that you you know you, you basically get it into the cellular structure. There's a couple different ways you can do that. We use vacuum. Um, other places, it's like it's kind of like the the same idea as pressure treated wood. Um, in a sense, you know, they use super high pressure to get something in there that kind of stabilizes, you know, some sort of a, a chemical, I guess, in there for, for pressure treated lumber. Um, but what we're doing is we're removing atmospheric pressure and allowing the stuff to just flow right in there. Um, and then you're just, you're just liquid, you know, you're, you're saturating the inside with this resin. You put it in the oven and bake it and it turns into a, a hard kind of plastic type type thing it's it's you know i mean in a sense it's kind of similar to casting resin and you know all these things are all kind of plastics or derivatives um, but um stabilizing is is definitely totally unique compared to where the heck are my glue i don't know my, i need some glue sticks um it's it's definitely different than casting and what I've done with these things is one of the other nice advantages, one of the reasons I really like uh, wood stabilizing is you can add dyes to that, that um, stabilizing resin and you can, you can literally turn the wood different colors from the inside out. So compared to like just using an aniline dye that you just rub on the surface, it can only penetrate so far and it's not like cured into the wood. If you put more alcohol on it, it, it dilutes it and run, makes it run. This stuff is baked in place. That color is baked in, basically, um, throughout the wood. So it's pretty, pretty uh, neat. It's a pretty neat uh, system, basically. Doug, Doug's in for some colors. Nice, sweet. All right, so we're switching views here. I got my glue gun. I think it's somewhat ready. Let's see. Are you ready? Uh, not really. Not yet. We're gonna give it another minute. Oh, I still didn't plug the stupid camera in. Oh, what did I just do? <laughs> I pushed a button, guys. <laughs> I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> We're back. It's all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this thing. Oh, come on. Work with me here. Let me get this thing a little bit more centered here. Okay. We're okay. Everything's all right. All right. I think that's probably pretty good. So all, what I'm going to do is I just, I want to, I, all I'm trying to do is hold this in place so it doesn't move around. It just, you know, they're, they're loose in there. I didn't cut it perfect. And so I'm going to put it on the back. I kind of find, I like putting it just on the edge like that rather than the bottom. So I'm just going to run a line of bead of glue. And that should hopefully just kind of hold it in place. Now, one thing I forgot to do was, uh, which I usually do is, I'll hit the, the, the HDPE mold where I'm gonna be putting the glue. I'll hit it with a little denatured alcohol to make sure that I'm 
I don't have any uh, mold release or some other stuff that's gonna make the, the glue not wanna stick. HDPE is pretty, pretty much non-stick in the first place, but the, the hot glue will hold it in place. You know, it's just, you can't like really knock it around too much. It's, it's not holding it excellent, but it'll hold it in place enough uh, so that it just doesn't move. So that's gonna be pretty cool. We got a little bit of a, a little river in the middle. So we got turk. you know, this is a, I don't know, it's not turquoise, it's like teal. Let me, let me actually hit this with some, I'm gonna hit the wood with a little bit of denatured alcohol. That'll bring the colors out a little bit. I just wanna make sure you guys who are picking colors know what we're working with here. So let's see if I can do this in the middle. So kind of, they're going to be pretty vibrant. It's, it's, it's a pretty nice looking green. Maybe even a little bit darker than like a teal. Oh, see that? You can't move it around too much. I'm going to have to re-glue that guy, but... I don't know. Hopefully that kind of helps. Red and green, basically. So my glue came off, but that was the edge that I didn't clean off first. So that'll give me a chance. I'm just going to scrape this glue off real quick that I had on there. Just don't need a huge glob of it. And I'll admit, this isn't necessarily the, the most amazing way to, to hold these things in place necessarily, but it's like, it, it works good enough, kind of, is, is how I figure. And, it, and it's not going to make it difficult to, to demold them later either. All right, so we wipe that off. We're going to re-glue re this guy. This time I won't mess with it. Okay. I'm going to pop this guy in the oven. And actually, one little tip. So, you know, I, I, a lot of times I'll tell you guys, like, one, 135 Fahrenheit is what I kind of keep my, my toaster at. And even I've been having some issues with, with a lot more rounding. And so I've actually cranked the, the, the temperature up a little bit. I have it set at like, I have the dial set at 150, but it's, it's actually kind of hovering around the 160, 170 mark. And for like the timing of things, it's working better. And one thing that I guess I didn't really think about, um, one, one little factor that, that, you know, you say, what, how, how hot should I get my molds? Um, if, if you only heat the mold to 135, your resin's gonna hit much higher than that. So you're still, you know, the walls of that mold are still colder than the resin's getting. So probably not a bad idea to go up to about 150, 160 um, and try and get those, those molds pretty warm. Now watch out though, because they're pretty, they're pretty hot when I take them out of the oven now. Um, but I am getting a lot better square, you know, none of that kind of corner creep thing. Um, that I that I've been getting and, and I think it's worse in the in the winter. Uh, it's just colder outside anyway Oh, do they have the Yeah, well actually, you know, what? that's the funny thing. I think I bought this this glue gun at Home Depot anyway in the first place All right, so let's stop real quick. I haven't even been paying attention to you guys So I know that Frank wants plum crazy um, and then going by the colors. Let's get, let's do three colors in this first uh, first batch, how about that? And I'm just going to double check and make sure. Yeah, hot glue. Yeah, the hot glue might kind of melt a little bit in the oven, but whatever. It's, it's fine. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Okay, so, so, okay. Frank, what color do you want? I'm going to look at the, the chat now. I know you said plum crazy, but now based on the colors that we're doing, do you want to change that or... Go with the same color and then ann let's see yeah so frank ann and nancy what colors do you guys want for this one nancy wants burgundy or deep red yeah usually if you stabilize wood it doesn't float but even still even if you have stabilized it uh, it sometimes they can float um the thing is Actually, I, I really don't even know what, what, why, <laughs> why that is. Um, I don't know. There shouldn't really be air in it. I don't know. <clears throat> Ann, 
Ann wants mint green. All right, so we got, this is a pretty, pretty much a mint green, I think. Switch to this view. The, the lime green, is that, is that a good mint? Or, yeah, that's probably the closest. I could maybe lighten it a little bit with some white. You know what we could try is to add macro pearl to this. That should actually lighten it, but it'll also make it blingy. That might be kind of interesting. I never tried that before. Frank still wants purple. And like I said, I do have the, the um, plum crazy still. I actually, <laughs> I, have, I have two gigantic tubs of plum crazy still. I went and bought a bunch <laughs> not too long ago. So we got plum crazy for Frank and mint green and a burgundy kind of color so um let's do blood red and we'll add a little bit of black that's a it's kind of a that's blood red so let's let's try that we can add a let's see here i'm trying to think Yeah, we could add a little bit of black. We could even add a little bit of blue to make it a little bit more burgundy kind of. So we got that stuff. We got that stuff. So let's see here. Okay, so Ann wants to try the, the macro pearl. I've never tried this one yet, so we'll have to kind of play around with the colors. So let me get my little book of notes out here. I'm so excited that my I got a new Neo pen, and this thing works great. It's actually recording my notes now again, so <laughs> it's always good. So today is 6.19. And we're doing, let's see here, we're doing hybrids. And so number one, um, we're doing, I don't know, three blank mold. And the chunks are red and green. And we're going to use Lumilite Clear Slow Set. So uh, that, that, this mold, these, these three blank molds hold about 280 grams if I wanted to get a one inch blank out of it with just resin. And we've got at least, at least a third of that, you know, like pro probably more like half of it is filled with wood, but we're going to kind of overshoot that a little bit. So let's just go with 180 grams. That should give us plenty. 180 grams total and then we're just gonna we'll just divide this into three which is 60 grams each 30 times two Lumilite clear is a one-to-one -one ratio by weight for anybody that's kind of new to the scene here this is what I usually use this is what most of my um, you know most of the blanks that I make are, are made with Lumilite clear slow set um, so one to one by weight, and if if anybody's, uh, I always kind of forget. I'm I'm now a, a, an affiliate for Illumilite, so and I have the affiliate link uh, down in the show notes as well as a code. Um, so if you use the code Zach10 when you check out with Illumilite, and it doesn't matter what you buy, um, you save 10% on your first order. So not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. All right, so number one, we're doing mint green, uh, which is going to be, and I don't know, we'll have to kind of see how much of the, the divine pigments I actually put in there, and then I'll record that, but we're going to go divine pigments, uh, what is this, mint, what do they call this, lime, key lime green, key lime, plus macro pearl. And then we got Plum Crazy, and we have Blood Red. Let's see, we're going for a burgundy kind of. Blood Red plus mm, yeah. I'm actually, I think I'm going to add a little bit of blue to that. That should make it a little bit more on the burgundy kind of side and still darken it a little bit. All right, so uh, Plum Crazy, we're going to go with, uh, let's just see what a quarter teaspoon is like. I think that might be enough to get it um, pretty much opaque. 
Same thing, we'll do a quarter teaspoon of blood red and then probably like, we'll just add a few drops of the blue and see as we go. And then with the key lime and macro pearl, I'm guessing, I don't know, we'll, we'll just have to kind of give it a few squeezes with the key lime and then, you know, we'll just add like an eighth teaspoon at a time to, of the macro pearl to see how we can get, get that to look. So, let me get my hot glue gun out of the way so that I don't burn a hole in my resin container. We don't want to burn a hole in the resin jug. That would be terrible. Let's see here. Chris is here. How's it going? Pixie's here. Jim's here. Yeah, I'm a little bit bummed that Cash's choices. <laughs> it's frustrating. It just... Uh, very frustrating. But, you know, like I said, I, when it comes to most of these micas, it's not typically very hard to find pretty much the same exact color in another brand. I mean, they're all kind of the same thing. Um, the one thing that I haven't been able to find yet, Alumalite, you know, they're, they're metallic colors. So like they're, you know, like metallic copper and they have gold. Um, they used to have silver, which was one of my favorite it was it was highly unique and i cannot find anything that works exactly the same as that um i can kind of approximate the color that you get from it but i, I can't i i can't duplicate it's a, it's a different type of 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 powder um for anybody that doesn't really know it, it it's and it's not really metallic it's i think it's just super super fine and it, and it acts differently I don't, I don't, I, I just, I don't know. Um, but for some reason, the, the, the place that Alumalite buys the, the silver from, they're out of the silver and they can't, like, nobody can get it. And nobody knows what it actually is. It's kind of a bummer. All right. So let's see. I'm just going to mix up 90. Yeah. So I can just mix everything up in one cup. Um, let me, let me just think about something real quick. Yeah. Okay. So. You know what we're going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to increase this to 195 and we're doing 65 grams of each. 66, let's just call it 66 grams. So 33. I just, I want to make sure that we're not shorting the amount of resin. So I'm just adding a little bit more. Um, so it's about a hundred and let's see, 66 times three. 198 total. So I'm just going to mix up everything in this cup. You guys can see on the, the little square up in the top. I'm going to zero my cup out and we're going to put 99 grams times two. So 99 grams of part A, 99 of part B, and then we're going to divide it off into these little cups, add our colors, and go from there. So zeroed out there. 99 bottles of Illumilite on the wall. Ninety-seven. Nine. Okay, I'm a little, little bit over. No big deal. Ninety-nine point five. So I'm going to add the same amount of Part B. <clears throat> that might have been too much. That was a little bit over. I'm I'm a little heavy-handed today, guys. All right, so let's mix this guy up here. I want to scrape the bottom, the sides of the cup. Make sure all the little part A's and part B's get mixed. So Dave, Dave's creations is asking about Caster's Choice. Yeah, I, I don't think that they're going to be restocking their suppliers. Something's going on, and <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they're going to be around. I don't know. So, But in the meantime, I've talked to, to Chad Schimmel, and 
we're going to try and get the figure out which and even if they don't have if, if eye candy doesn't have it we're going to try and figure out like alternatives that are the same colors as all the caster's choice ones under eye candy pigments <clears throat> that way at least you know if you had a favorite you're not like totally screwed that's that's what sucks about this but the way mica powders work they're all the same L literally i think that there are one maybe two factories in the world and they all come out of the same thing. Um, it just depends on which ones you order, you know, <laughs> whichever, whatever brand, you know, uh, whatever ones they order from that factory, basically. So it's not like it's that big of a deal, necessarily. Just got to find the right one. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to put 66 grams in each of these two cups. I'm a little over on that one. We're okay, though. Okay, so we got our three cups. <clears throat> Let's, I'm going to just get rid of the, the plum crazy is the easy one. We're doing a quarter teaspoon. I'm just going to put that in this big cup here. One and done. I guess I'm off camera there. That's all right. And then the way to make sure, you know, if you're making pen blanks or ring blanks let's say you know anything where the final product whatever you you know when you get done turning it it's going to be thin um, and you want it to be nice and pearly the way to figure out how much of the mica to add is is to just pull the stick out and if you can't see the stick then you're good it's going to be pretty much opaque um, you know you still may want to color the tubes or whatever's underneath it that that'll help but uh, you know you're, you're guaranteed to get a good pearly color if that's what it looks like on the stick. Um, the thicker it is though, the less you usually need. You don't need to load up a big blank because there's more of that stuff, more of the mica powder per kind of like square inch, let's say. Um, and they all kind of, you know, it's a, a deeper field of that kind of stuff. So you don't need as much usually. Um, so now let's, let's, let's do this, uh, Lime green next. Let's try and figure this out. So we're using Divine Pigments Key Lime. I'm going to shake this up. And I'm going to add, I don't know, like two, two kind of drops, let's say. And I want to see what that looks like. I don't want to add too much of this because this is opaque and you need to keep it somewhat transparent. You got to have a, you don't want it super, super opaque with the, the, the dye. Otherwise you won't, you know, you won't see your, your pearls. So I probably could have, I, now that I think about it, I really probably should have just used one drop on that first one. But we'll see. We'll see what we can get here. So the macro pearl is a white kind of chunky. It's almost like, it's almost glittery, but it is still a mica powder. So I'm going to add, we're going to add an eighth teaspoon of this stuff. All right, and we'll see where we're at. But it should lighten the green just a little bit because we're adding white basically to it, but it should also add a little bit of pearliness. And that's not too bad. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's adding a little bit of pearly. Let's, let's go for one more eighth. Don't sneeze while you're adding this stuff. It'll be all over your shop. It's already, it's already all over me. Yeah, so that's pretty good. I like that. It's, it's maybe not so minty. It's still kind of lime green. But the problem is I don't really want to add a bunch of white dye because that is a super opaque color. So that's not really the way we want to go with, with this. 
We could maybe add a little bit of like a pearl white and see what that does, but it's really, it's just gonna lighten that color. <sighs> Not sure that we're gonna get mint. That's kind of a tough one to, uh, I, I, I do make a mint kind of color um, in my other blanks. And I, to be honest, I don't even know what that recipe is. <laughs> so I don't know how I got that. It's kind of an odd color. So I think, I think I'm gonna call that good. I think we're good there. And then we're gonna do a little bit of blood red. So let's see here, eighth, what did I say? A quarter teaspoon of blood red. And then we're gonna add a little bit of blue to this. You could, you could add blue mica or you could add blue dye. Either way, you're gonna get kind of the same results. I'm just gonna add a little bit of alumilites, right, you know, their blue dye. I know it doesn't have the, their label on it, but that's what it is. I buy it in the 16 ounce squirt bottle things and just fill these small ones up. Okay, so we're gonna close that up, put our sticks away, put our blood red away. And this is just a transparent dye, so a little bit easier. I'm actually gonna mix this in first, and then we're just gonna kinda add a little bit at a time. Alumilites dyes are very, um, what's the word I'm trying to think? Uh, very concentrated, so you don't really need to add a whole lot to affect colors. In fact, I think I'm going to start out with just toothpick pinpricks of it just to see how that affects the color that we get. So, like, like so. I'm just going to add a little bit on this toothpick and I'm going to kind of wag it around in there. And I just want to see what that does because I have a feeling that's probably going to... Uh, that didn't really do a whole lot. Let's go for a drop. Let's just try a drop and see what happens. Small drop. The littlest drop I can get to come off the tip there. There we go. That's burgundy right there. I think. You can maybe make it a little bit more. But I don't really want to get it too dark. Too much darker either. I think that's a pretty good burgundy. Not bad. Okay, so we got our colors. Let's see what temperature we're at on our resin. I'm gonna pour it around. Let's see what's the temperature in here. I'll probably pour it around 105, 100, 105. We're at 97 in that cup, 100 there, and 98 in this cup. Okay. So we're, we're pretty close already. Crocs and socks, woo! I'm just scrolling up to see what you guys are chatting about a little bit. You guys are just having some fun. Cool. All right, so our mold's nice and warm. See where we're at temperature wise. It's a 101. And what I'm looking for, I kind of am looking for pretty much after 95, I think that you're fairly good uh, for, for minimizing color bleed. But I also look at the, the thickness, the viscosity of the resin. I'm, so I'm going to wait a little bit longer. I like it a little bit thicker when I'm pouring it. And so the longer you wait, the thicker it's going to get. So this cup's at about 100. Let's see where this one's at. 102. So we're, we're just about there. <clears throat> hey, Russell, how's it going? Denmark, nice. Oh yeah, I, I know you're from Denmark. Woodsley's here, what's up? Wayne, how's it going? All right, so I think we're at about the viscosity that I want. I'm just gonna start pouring some, some swirls in here. A little bit at a time. There's lots of different ways you can do this. This is how I usually do it. It'll give you some good, 
good color separation. Uh, one one cool way to do it is if you use the paper cups, you can just kind of squeeze them all together and hold them all at once and pour them at once. That's that's a pretty good method actually for for doing color swirls. I don't. The problem is I don't really like using the paper cups because you can't really see on video inside the cup, you know. So not my favorite. So this works just fine. Not much space in, in this little this little mold to get a lot going, but All right. Now one drawback to doing this lots of little pours is the, the resin just continues getting hotter and hotter and kind of getting closer to curing. So sometimes by the end, if you're messing around too long, it's it starts getting really thick. I'm gonna pour a little bit more. I think that's, that's thick enough uh, for the blanks, but I wanna kind of pour a little bit more because these little pieces of wood are a little bit thinner than the the actual mold. So there might be, you know, once we pressurize it, it may want to kind of fill in some of the edges, you know, on the on the ends here and stuff. So I'm just I'm actually just going to kind of dump it out. I'm going to basically cut all that off, but I'll just add a little bit more at the end here. Ooh, look at that. That's thick stuff right there. Ooh. All right, so it's pretty much filled in at that point. And if you wanted to, you could give it a little swirl with your, your stir stick. I think it's fine the way it is. And then at this point, we just toss it in the pressure pot. We're good to go. So I'll pressurize it to 70 PSI. My pressure pots can go up to 80. So I'm well within the working limits of them you don't want to go over the whatever the max is on your pot that's a no-no and it could uh that's where they get dangerous but all you need the minimum for resin to get the air and all we're doing with pressure is removing air bubbles or you know squashing them basically shrinking them to the point where they're effectively gone and uh so the minimum that you need is 40 or so um, but, and the thing is you want to be above that because most pressure pots are not in, it's very tough to get them to be completely sealed where they literally don't lose any pressure. Um, so, you know, the high, that's one of the reasons why I like to be a little higher, just in case there was some sort of a leak or something, you know, you're not going to drop below because if it drops below 40, then you, then the, the air bubbles start growing back and you can still have air bubbles, even though you pressurize them. So make sure your pot's sealed. Um, actually, that's another reason why I, when I first got into resin, I liked Alumalite, uh, and I, I started using Alumalite Clear, their regular uh, version. Um, that stuff, I mean, it's set up in like 30 minutes, 45 maybe. So you really don't need to worry if how, uh, you know, sealed up your pressure pot is because, you know, it's probably not going to lose so much pressure over an hour uh, where, you know, it, it starts getting below 40. Um, the slow set, it's about a two to four hour um, demold time. That's how long you'd need to leave it in the pressure pot. So again, um, two to four hours is not that long, but you know, you're slow setting epoxies. You got to have a pressure pot that's sealed up enough to where it's not going to drop below that threshold over the course of like possibly six to eight hours. So that's one, one reason I kind of like the faster setting resins too. So let's see here. <laughs> resin superhero i don't know about that 
I'm just reading some of the stuff. Uh, the, the wood, so hey, how's it going, Amy? Um, we're doing, it's, it's just dye stabilized um, Buckeye Burl. Those pieces had some uh, red and kind of green teal um, dye stabilized pieces, or that, that mold. And then we got a few more in the, in the oven here. So let's do the other three blank mold, and then we got a six blank. Um, so the, the, the next three blank mold, let me get my gloves on here and then I'll pull that out. I need to glue it in and get this mold going. So uh, let's see here. I'm going to switch to the other view so it uh, focuses here. Uh, this one. All right. So this one's a little bit of red and yellow, maybe a little bit of orange in there too, actually. I don't really, I don't know. I don't go for very specific results when I'm die stabilizing. It's it gets frustrating if you are doing that, I find. So I, I just like to have fun with it. And, and I, I'm never disappointed with the results, just kind of having fun. So we got some red, some yellow, and some orange in this. Um, and it'll look even better once we you know, put a finish on it, polish it up. Um, so I'm going to put this in this mold. I want to wipe off my mold so that it, I'm going to hot glue it in. I, actually, I need to get my hot glue gun plugged in again. Let me wipe, I'm going to wipe off the mold where I'm going to glue that a little bit with some denatured alcohol. Did I get it? I don't know if I actually got it. Let me, let me redo that. I'm going to, I'm going to apply the glue to the end and that way I want to have that with no, uh, there may be some, you know, demold agent or something on there. So that thing's ready to go. I got to get my glue gun plugged in, get that going. Should have had that plugged in somewhere else. But that's okay. Well, I'll just have to wait a minute. Yeah, pink and orange, that's right. Okay, so yeah, who is up next here? It is, it's Doug and Jen, okay. So what kind of pink do you want? We got the fluorescent pink, and then I got a few, well, I actually don't have vibrant pink anymore. Um, they ran out of that. I actually, I want to, I do want to pick some of that up, but I have raspberry pink, which is very similar to that vibrant pink one. So I've been using that. So we got one of those two. I don't think there's anything else that I have, really. The pink. Oh, I guess I have... I've got bubblegum pink from, uh, let's see what this kind of, yeah. So, I mean, that's like Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> it looks like kind of a little bit. <clears throat> bubblegum. I mean, it looks like bubblegum, I guess. Bubblegum, raspberry, and fluorescent. And fluorescent is not super solid, but it's, it's like a hot pink fluorescent kind of pink but it doesn't get opaque. Yeah, you can leave the compressor connected. That is one way to kind of get around it, but I don't know. I, I don't personally recommend it. I wouldn't, I don't like doing that. If, and I know that the chances are, are like infinitesimal that something could go wrong, uh, like your regulator as well as your safety could, you know, go, something could happen to them. But the thing is, if something didn't work and you've got your, you know, compressor hooked up, if it, if it keeps going, it could end up causing a problem. So I don't, you know, generally it's not that hard to get your pot sealed. It just, you know, for eight, an eight hour, you know, period of time even. I'd, I'd rather see that happen personally, and that's what I recommend, but you can do it. Um, you can just leave it hooked up and, and where it's, you know, compressing, but you really want to make sure, you know, that you don't take safeties off your pot and make sure that your regulator on your compressor as well as on your uh, pot, if you have one, are set to the right one. Any pink or glitter. All right, cool. Yeah, well, let's go with this one. I, I, the raspberry pink's pretty nice. I, I like that one. It, it definitely is one of the easy, e it's an easy way to get a good look, a good looking pink. And let's see, and then Doug wants orange, is that right? I don't know, I didn't, I haven't double checked that. Right, let me, I, I need to double check. 
that uh, that Doug wants an orange. And do you want, um, and if that's the case, do you want, we got, you know, different colors of orange. We got tiger orange um, from Divine Pigments. We got blaze orange, everybody's favorite, I think. Not bad from Caster's Choice. Let's see here. Uh, looks like Quasi's. I, I think you, you're asking me if I cut this on a CNC. No, I didn't. I just I just cut the things out and screw them together. I use a table saw to cut all the pieces. So blaze orange. I think blaze orange and raspberry pink. I think that I think I do think that's going to be a good one. Okay, so let me write my little notes here. Actually. I got to I got to get this mold going. So hopefully is this thing ready? I want to get my mold. Eh, it's not really ready. We got to wait a second, guys. Hold on. I should have had that mold in the Nope. That glue coming all over the place. Hot glue strands. Um I want I we need to make sure that this mold's nice and warm otherwise we'll get the rounded corners and not very fun. Uh where did I get the the this thermometer? I mean, this, this guy, the infrared, I got this at Harbor Freight, I think. Centec, is that, is that a Harbor Freight brand? Sounds like a Harbor Freight brand. It was either there or on Amazon. I'm going to look up on, on Harbor Freight's website real quick here. Hmm. Okay. Not a good idea to just type in IR. All right. Infrared thermometer. Here we go. Let's see what they got. I don't know. Well, online, I guess I don't I don't know. I don't know where I got it. I think I got it at, at, like actually at Harbor Freight. <clears throat> Yeah, a lot of people use CNCs to cut HDP. Yeah, HDP is soft. It's it's a, a very soft material. Very easy to CNC. Yeah, no, you, you, there is a little bit of work to do on a pressure pot. I got a video that shows you how to convert Harbor Freight ones, which they're similar to many of them out there, uh, and the, these, the CA Technologies ones that I use. It's not hard. It's a little bit of plumbing. You're just putting on some plumbing parts, but out of the box, you have to, you know, they don't even, they're not assembled fully. Um, the, you know, the regulator and all that stuff. So you, you do have to add a couple things to it, but it's all simple stuff. And then I have another video for anybody that is setting one up. So I have the videos on like how to convert them, but you definitely, before you start messing around with one, I highly recommend looking at my finding and fixing leaks video. Um, that will help because there actually are a few things that you want to use. Um, the best thing to do on your, your threads is to use this 545 from Loctite. It's an anaerobic sealant. Pretty much your threads are not going to leak at that point. Anything that's a, a plumbing thread, um, that stuff is pretty much bulletproof. Um, and then the only other things, you know, sometimes some of the components can kind of leak. I've seen safeties leak. And you just use a, a spray bottle with some soapy water and spray all the stuff down. And if air bubbles come out, then you got a leak there. Um, and then the last thing, if, if you're losing air, um, you know, and nothing on the top, no, none of the components, the plumbing parts and all that are leaking, they're solid, then your lid is actually leaking. And I got stuff in those videos that can kind of help you out. Jamie Page, what's up, dude? How's it going, man? You 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 get to get on in on the, the next colors on, on the next one. So we're doing some we're doing some some pen blanks here. The next one we got we're gonna do a six pen blank mold with these two guys. So you're the first color choice when we cast those. Right now, 
we're doing this guy with orange and pink for Jen and Doug. So I got to give that a few minutes. I'm kind of stalling here for a second. Hey, Denise is in there on that second round too. Nice. Yeah, I, you know, and as much as I like the CA Technologies pots, some of their safeties, I had, I, I got one of their pots and it just, I had to replace the safety. It was just terrible. And they actually sent me replacement safeties of their, like their own, whatever they use. And I ended up just going to McMaster Car and buying some. They're super cheap. That's an easy one to fix. Um, safeties, um, I think they cost like five or eight dollars and they're, the ones that I was getting were, were good. Um, sometimes the regulator, I've actually seen the regulators leak and they, they, at this point, CA Technologies, I think, is sending them where there's a ball valve underneath the regulator, so that cuts it off. Even if the regulator did leak, you're cutting it off with that ball valve. Um, I don't have mine set up that way because I don't really want another, I don't want the, the regulator so high um, that, you know, I don't know. I don't like doing it that way personally, but it is a good way to separate out that regulator. Then all you have to do is make sure that the threads have that anaerobic sealant on them. They have some, yeah, they're made, they actually have pots. So CA Technologies has ones that are, you know, quote unquote, made for resin casting. Um, but all that means is they've taken off parts that the paint sprayer people would, would use and that we would just take off. So there, I don't know, but originally that's what these things are. They're, they're for paint spraying they're, They pressurize paint and you know, you can spray it for different types of things. Why do I prefer HDPE? Um, well, silicone's fine, but I like these cause they're rigid. Um, I can just toss them in silicone, you know, when you pressurize it, it's going to conform to any shape. So I would have to put it on something flat every time. And I, I it's just one of those things I've been using this stuff forever. Um, another thing is I don't like the commercially available. I, I have very extremely specific sizes that I use, um, for my molds. Um, it's about five by six, but I, I have like, it's, it's down to literally eighths. And I can't get the size that I want. The other problem I have with the commercial ones is they're not deep. I like my, my molds to be deeper. Um, I don't, because a lot of times I'm sticking stuff in there. Um, I don't want, I don't want them to be just one inch deep, which is what you kind of find. Nathan's here. What's up, man? Nathan is, is going to be turning that bowl blank that, that we just cast last Friday. That was his bowl blank, guys, so. You got to cheer him on and he should be getting that, that blank on Saturday. So hopefully he'll get on that thing and we'll see what it looks like. You out of here? Quick jump. That's cool, man. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. What color do you want? Yeah, pick a color if you, if you haven't left yet. All right, so let me just kind of touch this and... Yeah. I really want to. I want to. I really want to give this mold a good amount of time here. So we're just going to kind of stall a little bit. <clears throat> if you're watching the replay, just zoom ahead a little bit. <laughs> we'll just we'll just have some fun here. Someone asked about uh, costs. So like pressure pots, they can range from like ninety bucks up to a thousand, basically, or more. Um, the, the ones that I use, these, these CA technologies, they're about 300. Um, they're high quality. Um, they're not ASME rated, um, but they're, they're of that quality. Um, if you want the safest pot, pot on the planet, the Binks ones, but they cost a lot of money. And I mean, I do this for a living and I'm not even willing to spend the money on a Binks pot. Plus, I don't really like the size, the dimensions of the Binks pots. Um, CA technology is a little bit wider, um, which works better for me. Uh, personally. Uh, most of the other ones are about a nine inch diameter. Nothing wrong with that, but they are a little bit tight. Let's see. Did Jamie pick the color? I don't think he did. Darn. Hey, Shauna, how's it going? We're just kind of messing around here, waiting for my, my mold, giving it a little extra time. I'm finding that I, I, I'm liking getting them a, a lot warmer than I've been doing.
What did Rob say? Where's Rob? Hmm. Let's see here. What uh, so and I mentioned this, the temperature thing. So I have been seeing about 135 Fahrenheit, but I'm finding, you know, my shop's about 70 something. 72, it's 75 right now. And I've, I've been really getting a lot of that kind of corner creep. What ends up happening is people people think that the resin shrinks or something. It's not actually shrinking. It's just, it's sucking away from the edges and, and uh, migrating towards the, the center, which is the warmest. And so um, to kind of help eliminate that and let that resin just kind of, you know, settle out and, and make sure that it's not, you know, like shrinking away or, you know, trying to get away from the colder edges you put it in the oven and to heat it up. And so I'm, I've got my oven. Let's see, what does the actual temperature gauge say right now? Yeah, it's at 150. And I think that, you know, 150, 160, maybe even 170 kind of depends on, I don't know that it needs to be 170 degrees, but you know, the resin's going to, the thing is resin heats up when it's curing. And so if it's significantly lower than the temperature of the resin, then it's still going to want to kind of suck away. So I, I'm, I'm thinking like if you can set your, your oven to around 150, maybe 160, I think that's not a bad idea. And then kind of factoring in like 15 to 20 minutes in there, it should be pretty warm. And I've been getting a lot better results myself um, since I've started turning it up. The problem is the higher you go, the hotter the things are. And they're kind of, you just got to, you got to be kind of careful. You don't want to burn your hands. That's why 135 is a good number because it's usually not so hot that you can't touch them. But I, I do think that higher is, is better. You've been practicing with resin, key rings and jewelry. Cool. That's fun. What letter is the pot next to you? What letter? Next to my bin? I don't know what we're talking. Oh, this? Tab left? Is that what you're talking about? It's a tab left workshop. That's Ray over in, he's right over the hill. I'm thinking that's maybe what you're talking about. I don't know. All right, so I think that we are probably, we can start getting going because we still have to wait for the resin to kind of, let's see here. Yeah, you don't want to melt your molds. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely, you don't want to be over, you know, like most of this HDPE stuff, like it's got a temperature rating of like about a 175, 180. So you don't want to be over that. It'll start really deforming and stuff. Why do certain colors sink? Because they're heavier. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't help it. I don't know. The, the, the materials are just heavier. Okay, so there's our casting view. I'm going to write our notes. So number two here is going to be... Um, it's going to be the red and yellow and orange burl. And all these burls are dye stabilized with cactus juice. And it's, it's all, I'm pretty sure it's all Buckeye burl. Actually it is. It's, it's Buckeye burl. And so I'm using what I call my three blank mold. Again, we're using uh, Lumalite clear slow set version. And I don't know. I think we can probably just uh, estimate about the same. This time we're only doing two blanks, so let's let's do 180, 180 grams. I think that might be enough. Let me let me look at this thing again. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I always like to just overshoot. So 200 total. That's going to be 100 grams times two, and then we're going to be going with raspberry pink and blaze orange caster's choice for these guys. So let's just do a 50-50. So that's going to be 100 grams in one cup, 100 grams in another cup. And we're going to go with a quarter teaspoon of each of those powders. Blaze orange. And I'm, I'm taking notes. So for, for anybody that's kind of a newbie, I have a notebook and I, and I record all of these stats, you know, like how much resin was it? What, what am I doing? Kind of what mold, what, what resin, how much resin, and then, you know, what did we put in here? So I'm putting a, a quarter teaspoon of blaze orange in a hundred grams of resin, quarter teaspoon of raspberry pink. So I, I really highly recommend doing this. Um, and, and I actually recommend it for anything that you're, you know, doing or learning. 
you know, if let's say you're getting into CNC or, or laser engraving, all of these things, you know, you're going to kind of have trial and error on a lot of things and setups. And it's good to keep notes of this stuff. It just, it makes repeatability so much easier and you just learn um, a lot better, a lot faster. Um, the other thing about just writing it down before you, you know, so I just wrote all this stuff down. A lot less likely to make a mistake <laughs> when you just wrote down all the directions that you need for these things, you know. So up in the, the top corner, you can see I'm zeroing out my scale that keyboard out of the way. So again, Alumalite Clear, the slow set version. It's got about a 10 to 12, well, 12, 12 minute working time. Kind of depends on the, the amount that you're mixing at once and the temperature in your shop. Um, and then it's got a demold time of, of like two to four hours. Again, kind of depending on the mass, the volume of resin. I'd leave these in the, the, the the pressure pot for with that much resin, you know, a couple hundred grams, probably for about three hours. You can probably get away with pulling it in two, but you know, it's not going to hurt anything to leave it in longer, but you could pull it a little early. Um, all right. So we're zeroed out hundred grams of part A. I'm mixing up the total amount in this cup that I need. So hundred grams part A, hundred grams of part B. Nine point seven. Okay, get our part B out. Another hundred grams of that. Zero that out. Ninety-seven. Ninety-eight. Ninety-nine. Oh, almost. Okay, that should be good. 100. All right, so we're going to mix it up. Let's see what's happening here. Yeah, these are all two and a half gallon. I got a five gallon behind me. For most people, unless like your the object of your resin casting needs is going to be making gigantic bowls and things like that, the two and a half gallon pots are plenty size. Um, and they're just, they're a little bit more manageable. Um, it's easier, the, the lids on a five, like I really don't enjoy the weight of the lid of my five gallon pot. It's heavy, you know, you got to kind of manhandle that thing. It's just, they're a little bit easier to use. So as long as most of what you're going to be making is, you know, is going to, is going to fit within like a, I forget what the diameter of these are, but you know, like 10, 11 inch diameter and probably about the same depth, you're good to go, you know, they'll fit lots of stuff. I don't really, I don't even really use that five gallon pot that often. And a lot of times, well, at least with CA Technologies pots, the, the five gallons expensive. It's like 500, 550 maybe. I, I honestly couldn't even really, eh. I don't know that I could recommend it. I think the California Air Tools five gallon pot is probably a way better deal. I think what, are, how much do those ones cost? Like 130 and they're, they're not a bad pot. I still think CA technology is a little bit better, but CA or the California Air Tools one is pretty good. I've used those before, not, not bad. All right, so that should be mixed up pretty well. And let's see here. So we're gonna divide this into hundred grams in, into this cup zeroed out my scale there put 100 grams in here okay got 100 grams in each one of those so we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of raspberry pink to this guy. And a quarter teaspoon of blaze orange. And these are these are caster's choice colors, but I don't think that the, those, I think that's kind of, I don't think they're gonna be carrying caster's choice colors much longer. So uh, we are, Chad and I are working on trying to figure out like a, a 
alternatives that are the same colors in, in eye candy. And he's even, I think Chad's actually going to put like a chart together. <laughs> so you guys, so everybody knows, um, what, you know, what, if, if you've been used to using plum crazy, then, you know, this one, whatever it is from eye candy will be the, the, the same type of thing, give you the same results. And I, and I don't quote me on it, but I do actually even think that eye candy might even expand their line to make sure that they have stuff that works for all of those colors that Caster's Choice had. Don't, like I said, not 100% sure, but I, I do believe that was uh, a possibility, at least. So don't fear if you've been using some color, it'll be there. And, you know, maybe someday Caster's Choice will come back. I'm not sure, but they're, as of right now, they're not being resupplied. So we got that mixed in. These are going to be some fun ones here. Orange and pink, yellow, orange, and red. These are going to be fiery bright. Yeah, the, the five gallon ones are they're big. I'll I'll pull my five gallon out. It's it's just it's heavy, it's cumbersome. It you know, if you're using a resin that's setting up very fast, um like I use this is another problem I have. So I, I use Alumalite white for a lot of my pen blanks that I sell. It's a very fast setting resin, two minute working time, literally. Like it's hard in two minutes. And so it, it, it actually, I can't even use my five gallon pot because it takes twice as long to, to bring the pressure up <laughs> and it's, it's, I don't have enough time. Uh, so, you know, there are some issues with those, the, the bigger ones, but you know, you also, if you're looking for something where you, you, you know, you can do big stuff, but you're mostly doing small stuff and you only want to buy one pot, then, you know, the obvious choice is just to get a five gallon pot. All right, so let's get this put away. Get me some more. Wipe my fingers off. It isn't all over the place here. So now it's just kind of a waiting game. I'm going to wait until it, it reaches a kind of... What, what we're doing here is we're waiting till the kind of near the end of the working time of this resin. Um, and it's going to kind of thicken up a little bit and it's going to warm up. And that will help keep the colors from... from bleeding together basically uh, as well as moving around and that's that's how they bleed um, the thicker it is you know the less these colors can kind of just um, like dissipate out or I don't, I don't know what, what what's the word I'm trying to trying to say here where they just kind of just kind of all settles basically so I'm gonna be waiting until let's see my shop right now it's 75 degrees I think about a one, 105 Temperature for the resin is probably going to be good. So we're at 90 in that one right now. So we got a few minutes here. And like I said, you got about a 12 minute working time. Um, originally, I used to do it by time. But the problem with that is that only works if you do, if it, if it takes you the same amount of time to stir it, right? And, and, and get everything ready. If you're very, very consistent with all that kind of stuff, then that's not the worst way to go. But the temperature thing is great. Um, the one thing that will, you know, cause the temperature is what it is. I mean, it doesn't really matter how long it took you to stir it up. It's gonna reach, you know, that temperature is very telling. The one thing that I do find though, is when the ambient temperature in my shop, if it was like 10 degrees hotter in here, then I would, I generally wait longer um, and that's just because your resin is, is actually thinner. It's starting out thinner. Um, and so I, I kind of like to wait till that, that same kind of thickness, basically, which means that I have to wait a little bit longer, higher temperature. Usually somewhere between 95 and 120, 130 is, is usually a kind of a safe range for pouring if you're trying to keep colors safe. And I think that goes for most of the resins. Does anybody in the chat use um, Total Boat? That's, that's one resin. I've never used it and I don't know anything about it really, but um, that one, I don't know temperatures. Um, I think liquid diamonds, I want to say it's somewhere around 120, 130 on that one. That's an epoxy. So I think a lot of the epoxies are somewhere in the 120, 130 range. 
is a good time around that temperature is a good one to pour at but i recommend testing things out like you kind of know the range a starting range test things out and see what results you get um, most likely based on the way that you pour and the temperature in your shop and all that stuff you'll probably find kind of an optimal temperature for the way that you do things in in your shop the way you pour things um, to get you know kind of consistent results and, and the results that you're looking for but overall basically we're just trying to keep these colors from just kind of mixing all together that's the that's the hope so we're about 97 degrees now Ninety-nine. Got a little bit longer to go here. Ah, Doug's on it. Nice. Yeah, I know Doug uses it, I don't, but he doesn't really do a whole lot. Well, I guess you do kind of wait and, and do stuff. I, but I've never seen you use the temperature gauge, I don't think. No, the Harbor Freight Pots are two and a half also. They are just different dimensions. They're skinnier and taller than the CA Technologies. <laughs> yeah, Doug uses Total Load. <laughs> ah, yeah, temperature's a pretty good one. It, it kind of, it's better than time. But I also, I do say that it's a good idea, if you, even if you got the temperature gauge out and all this stuff, it's not a bad idea to kind of understand and look at what is the viscosity, like pull some resin off the, the stick so that you just kind of know, you know, let's just say the batteries went out on this stupid thing or something, you know, it's good to know. It's kind of like the idea of, you know, you, you can use a calculator, but they always make you, you know, do math by hand so that you understand what's going on. And so I always recommend, you know, just, just be aware of what, what, what is, what does the resin look like? You know, how, how, do, how is it acting when it's optimal for you? Um, but then, you know, use the temperature gun. So we're, we're about there. Uh, it's, it, this is about the viscosity that I would like to, like to have it at to pour. Our mold's nice and toasty, super toasty. Again, uh, you know, when you start getting up to that 150 or so, degrees it, they're pretty warm when you take it out so so be careful when you're you're heating molds and stuff um it it you know be aware of that so i'm going to do this one slightly different we're going to do slightly bigger pours than the one that we just did of each color kind of get away with it a little easier with two colors but you'll get kind of different results depending on how you pour. If you're pouring it deep, if you're pouring it very slow and low, you know, close to the resin, um, the thickness and, and that temperature, you know, it, it, it kind of changes. So I think it's a good idea to kind of play around with stuff and, and see what works best for you and, and the way that you pour and what you're trying to get out of your results. Lots of different ways to do it. All right, so I'm gonna just cover that piece of wood. I'm gonna make sure that that's covered. So I, I think I did pretty good on my estimates of resin both these times. I wanna make sure that there's a little extra just in case there's some areas around or underneath the wood that can be filled. I don't want a big gap. All right. So, and again, you know, you can, it's not necessary or anything, but if you wanted to, you could use your, your stir stick and add a little bit of a swirl, you know, be kind of careful with it. And that'll give you slightly different results than if I would have just left it there. Okay. So let's open up this pressure pot. And drop her in. We'll put it up to 70 PSI. That's going to... Oh, I got resin all over my hand. Ha! <laughs> Not good. And all over the handle. Oh, man. It's getting everywhere. If you get resin on your 
hands, on your skin, the best thing to do is to just go wash with soap and water right away. Um, you can, if you use like acetone or denatured alcohol, it can kind of end up getting it more in like your skin pores. So just kind of a, the best way to go to, get, you know, if you get it on your skin is to just soap and water it right away. I'm okay. I'll, I'll be okay, but don't do what I do. <laughs> do what I say. All right, let's see here. If you want to pour a three inch by one inch medallion. Well, you know, a pressure pot is going to get rid of, eliminate air bubbles. That's all it does. So if you don't want to have any air bubbles, there are ways to pour without pressure pots, but, but they're still not like the thing is, it's like an insurance policy. <laughs> if this thing really, if, if whatever you're making really, you want to make sure there's no air bubbles in it, then, you know, I recommend using a pressure pot every time. Um, I, there's nothing that as long as I can fit it in a pressure pot, I'm going to pressurize resin. Um, it just, it, like I said, it's kind of an insurance policy for that stuff. Um, there are ways where, you know, you stir it really slow, pour it very carefully and do all this stuff and you can get it pretty much clear without, um, pressurizing it. There's no, you know, basically if you don't introduce air bubbles when you're mixing, there aren't going to be any when you like mixing and pouring it, then there's not going to be any in the resin when it cures. But I still think that your best bet is to just get a pressure pot. Yeah, huge amounts do heat up a lot faster too. That's that's true. But it, it really the big thing is it depends on what resin you're using. Um, some of them, you know, some of those those resins that people use for river tables and stuff. I mean, they have like a three hour working time. So, you know, you gotta it, everything kind of depends on your your own how much are you you know resin are you mixing up, what resin is it, what are the temperature and conditions in your shop, what are you trying to do. There's there's a lot of what ifs and and, and things like that. Um, one thing that I do want to mention though for anybody that's kind of a newbie, you know, if you're trying to pour a lot of resin and let's just say like, you know, a lot of times let's, a, 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 a good typical deviation point would maybe be, maybe not even a full 32 ounces, but because there's a lot of like the, the epoxies that, that would heat, overheat basically if you just tried to pour this much, a 32 ounce like cylinder. Um, so maybe a little bit less than that. But if you're trying to pour more than this, um, there's, there's only certain resins that can actually do that all in one shot. Otherwise, you'd have to pour it in multiple stages uh, because they'll overheat. So Alumilite Clear Slow Set is one. I know Total Boat's got one. Um, let's see. Uh, Entropy Resin has one. And what's the other one I'm thinking of? So, uh, Stone Coat. Uh, they're super cast can. So there's, there's a few of them out there that are, are kind of made to be poured in large quantities. I know a lot of the river table guys, um, they got thicker ones that can be poured thick. Um, so make sure that you're not trying to, you know, pour, <laughs> use the wrong resin in, in making some gigantic thing. There's only certain ones that are really meant to do that. All right, so let's see here. Total boat overheats at that amount. You'll have to explain that. I'm not sure. I thought that they had one that you could pour in gigantic. I'm confused. All right. So the last one that we're doing today, and we, we already got our mold heated up. I, I don't need to glue these guys in this time. Let me switch views here. I'll show you what I'm going to do on this one. So these things are, are pretty big already. And I'm actually just going to kind of hold them in place with tape, most likely, or something like that. I, I can just kind of put tape over this and, and we're good to go. So I'm actually going to do that right now so that I don't forget because I've been known to do that. I don't think these pieces would float. However, 
one thing that there's there's also a difference between floating and and when you pour your resin in, it can get, kind of get underneath and just move it around so if you want it to be stuck in place best to 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 get it you know keep it stuck do, do something to, to hold it where you want it so i'm just gonna do that and we're gonna do that okay so that's an easy way to just kind of hold stuff in place um, you can wedge it in place if you want all kinds of different ways to do it hot glue it just depends on what you're up to what you got on hand sometimes too all right so let's see here we got uh, i'm gonna i guess i'm just gonna i'm gonna pick somebody to to choose jamie's color because he, he he dropped in super chatted and, and had to go so i'll pick somebody that, that can use his color so we need denise and we need nathan to pick a, a couple colors that are going to work for these um, so there's some shades of purple in there some orange some red uh, maybe even i think that's about it it's, it's mostly orange uh, orange red and purple kind of sunsetty colors so that's what the wood's going to look like what color do you guys want for the re for the resin? So we got three colors. Well, yeah. So, but they have different. Total boat has different ones. You, yeah, countertop epoxies are generally. If it says it's a countertop epoxy, then you you can't pour it thick. They're meant to be poured in thin layers on a countertop, basically. Yeah, some of those the, the the river table people they cool their their environment, and that and that does change things. Like if you're trying to pour resin, even if it's one meant for large pours, and it's like a hundred here in Vegas or Phoenix, and it's like 120 degrees in your shop, then you're gonna have a tough time. Yeah, even if the tape melts, I'm not <laughs> not that worried about it. Let's see. So did we get any colors from me? I don't know if these guys are still here. Is Denise and Nathan here still? Hmm. Nathan's here. All right, cool. Oh, me? You want me to pick? Well, no, Chad. If you want to do a super chat, then you can pick a color. <laughs> the super chatters get first dibs. That's how it works, man. Oh, Blurple. That's not a bad one. I like that. Oops, I'm going the wrong way on the chat here. Where are we at here? Okay, so. So we got no colors because I don't see Denise either. Hmm. All right, so let's see here. I'm going to pick a few people. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Dominic. Dominic's always hanging around. You get to pick a color. And let's see here. Steve Coombs, because Steve's always getting chatty, getting chatty with it, and let's see here, I'm going to pick, let's see here. I think I'm going to pick one, how about that? <clears throat> <clears throat> did doug add another one what's going on here doug kim says gold okay where was kim at i didn't see kim
Ah, uh, Kim Tippin. Is she here? Or are you talking to her on a side chat? Hmm. All right, so gold. Let's see here. We got gold. And let's see. Dominic is going to go with light blue. Let's see. I got a... A pretty decent light blue is the paradise blue. This one's not not too bad. Paradise blue, it's it's a nice kind of light light blue. Let's do that. Paradise blue gold. Everett's here too. Oh man, everybody's. We're gonna be doing lots of colors. It looks like. <laughs> oh man. Gold, light blue. What do you want? What color do you want, Everett? Everett wants a ghost color. So. I don't have the the technically what they call ghost. I, these are the same things, but I've got green, red, blue, gold, and purple in the the quote unquote ghost, and those are interference colors. So you get to pick one of those. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Hope you have a good day at work. Ah, Kim's listening, I see. Cool. How's it going, Kim? Steve wants emerald green, all right. We got that. That one I'm definitely, we have to find uh, an alternative for that one because that's one of my favorites. So we got, let's see, gold. Um, Alumidust gold is a pretty decent one. It's a little bit richer gold than the Caster's Choice one was. Well, we have a I have a gold interference color as well. I think it'd be kind of cool. Interference gold and a gold. Should we do it? Are we that crazy? Are we missing anybody in the, in the thing? Yeah, inter so these interference colors, they look like white powder. Um, they work great with like a dark background. Um, let's see here. I got a video that kind of shows you how I use them. And, and so like in, if you have like a, if, if you have a light background, then they're just kind of like a, a weird kind of ghosty looking color. Um, depending on how the light hits it, it'll kind of reflect that, that, you know, in this case, a gold sheen. Um, but then, you know, there's blue, red, green, purple, um, with a dark back. Actually, I got a blank here. These are all interference colors. I got a blank. All right. So these are all interference colors, but with that black background, they really pop out. Um, but if this was just clear, it would just look like kind of a pearly, kind of a pearly white. That's how I do the abalone blanks. Having a darker background kind of makes that color pull out the way the light hits it. <laughs> she is that crazy. Oh man. Okay, so let's see here. Yeah, do well duotone colors are kind of that's the same thing too. Thanks, Jen. Yeah, I, well, I, you know what? I never did, I had never made, I had never made one where it was like black was, was the, the, you know, the main color in it and then just added interference colors. I know that it's like reflecting crazy. Um, but this one's kind of fun because it's got that, my micro starlight. So it's got that kind of spacey look black. And then all these interference colors just are crazy. They really look good with black. They also look good just kind of with the white, you know, and just a little bit of pop. Okay, so I think we got everything now. Um, I think we got all our colors. So we got gold, we got emerald green, we got paradise blue and interference gold. That'll be kind of fun. This, this, is, gonna, this is a really interesting combination. I like this. Who knows what this is going to uh, turn out like. Okay, so this mold is, I call this my six blank mold. So basically it's twice as much as the three blank molds. <laughs> yeah.
you know it. Uh, so, and there is a lot of wood in this. Um, typically, again, if I wanted like a one inch, now these, these pieces of wood are like way thicker than one inch too. They're like one and a half. Um, I could have cut them down, I guess, but whatever. It makes it easy to, to hold in place. They're definitely more than half of the, the mold, I would say. So five, 540 grams would give me an inch thick block of resin in there if there was no wood. So I think we can just cut that in half and we should be pretty good. Now there is a little bit of the, they're not the full width here. So do have to account for that a little bit, but 540 divided by two is 270. Let's just do 300 just to make sure. Like I said, I, li I like to just be above, it's fine. And if you're gonna, if, if you really think that you're gonna have a lot of extra, like you can't even actually fill your mold, then a good way to go is just have a PVC pipe handy, you know, and hit it with some stoner spray, you know, mold release, put a plug in it and just have that ready so that you can just add the extra to that pipe. Or, you know, if you have, let's just say, you know, these are little pendant molds, just have something where you can actually utilize any excess. And that way it's not that big of a deal to just overshoot the amount of resin if you don't really know exactly how much you need. Now, if you really wanted to figure out exactly how much you need, you could just put, pour rice in this mold, and then that'll give you a volume measurement of how much resin. I typically don't do that unless it's like a lot of resin. <laughs> Chad! Chad's in the game. What do you want, man? Which color? We're gonna have to add one more now. That's it, I, we gotta cut it off at five. We can't have more than five. <laughs> That's too, it's getting too crazy. Uh, let's see here. So 300. So, so again, we're going to use a Lumalite clear slow set. I'm using my six blank mold or two red, orange, and purple chunks of wood. And we're just going to split it into, let's see, 300 divided by five is 60 each. So we got gold. Probably an eighth teaspoon is enough. We got emerald, green, one eighth teaspoon. We got paradise blue, one eighth teaspoon. And interference gold. Probably just go with another eighth teaspoon, why not? I don't know, I don't know which way to go on that one. And where's Chad at? Do you want red? Is that what the red thumbs up is for? Let's see here. Just waiting on you, Chad. Let me know which color you want. And we'll get things rolling here. So this thing's nice and warm already. It's been, it's literally been in there in the oven for like <laughs> this entire time. So uh, what do I need? I need a cup. We're mixing up 300 grams total. And then we're gonna split it into smaller, let's see, 60 grams. I think I'm actually gonna pull out, I have some uh, where are those cups? Yeah. I don't really want to use those other ones. I think this should hold 60 grams. Let's see. Yeah. So I got some really little cups. One, two, three, four, five. Where did Chad go? Oh man, the suspense is killing me. How about you guys? What color is he gonna pick? <laughs> I don't know. My math, my math is on point. 
Uh, let's see here. Okay, so I guess we can get going. I, one thing that I think I'm going to do is we're actually going to... I'm going to mix up a little bit even more. Because I don't actually want it... I don't want just 60 grams in this cup sitting around. It's going to... It's never really going to warm up. So I'm actually going to fill five of these little small guys. And so I'm going to have a little extra resin that's going to get left behind in the cup. So I'm going to mix up in this one cup. We're going to put three... Like three... 330 grams, which I'm going to mix 165 part A, 165 part B. <clears throat> well, yeah, yeah, I guess he did say gold at one point, but, but now he's got another, another option. He can, he can do, now he can do whatever. All right, so 165, here we go. I'm up in the corner here. Three, uh, 165 part A, 165 part B, then I'll dump them all out and add our colors. If you're in a big rush, not a bad idea to add the colors to the cups, you know, beforehand. To save a little bit of time. I'm not going to save a ton of time, but it can save a little bit. All right, so we got 165 there. And whoa, I went over. Jeez, I'm going over a lot today. So I'm just going to even that up with my part A. It was 1.7 over. So I'm just going to add 1.7 part A. Doesn't really matter what the, the number is in the end as long as it's even. Same amount of part A and part B. All right, so it looks like Chad might have... <laughs> you know, where'd he go? Oh, man. He super chatted and left. He's like, I'm out of here. Maybe he had to go. There he is. What color do you want? He's back. You get to pick a color. You, you super chatted. So we got, we got gold. We got interference gold. We got paradise blue and emerald green. And you're the fifth color. You get to pick. Getting it mixed up right now. Looks like, yeah, you lied about it. <laughs> Actually, my math is still on point. That's how good I am. Even when I screw up, when I pour, I'm like, oh, 1.7 off. Oh, man. Ah, oh, Brian's here. What's up? Mr. TBC. All right, so that ought to be pretty well mixed up. I don't know if you guys could even see on the, up in the, the top corner there. Okay, so I'm going to zero out my scale with one of these little cups here. And we're going to put 60 grams or so in each one of these guys. Man, I went to Target and they had no, all of the paper towels were Selecticize. Am I the only person that hates Selecticize? I hate them. I, I've already selected. I want the whole thing. You know? Not an option, I guess, anymore. It's tyranny. Mm. These are, this is going to be pretty close here. I don't know. It's extremely full <laughs> to have to mix that. <sighs> okay, we're going to pull out these cups because otherwise 
I'm going to make a gigantic mess. So it's too bad. I'm going to zero that out. And we're going to go with dump this in there. Good thing I added extra. Okay, so 58, 60. Okay, 60 there. I'm gonna put these. I, I've been trying to find a use for those little, they're like three ounce cups and they just have no use. I think they, they just don't really have much use. I guess they'd be perfect for like maybe 30 grams or something. I'm just gonna eye this. It's not that important if they're exactly perfect. Yeah, whatever. I usually like to kind of put it, uh, you know, put it in a smaller cup, but I, I actually think this will be fine. So, uh, emerald. We already had emerald green. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me, Chad. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Send them to you. I'm sure I'll find a, a use for... Actually, you know what they are kind of good for? You can just make a bottle stopper out of one. Hey, Ray's here. What's up, man? So we're doing one eighth teaspoon in each one of these guys. I have no clue. I've been messing around this whole time. Resin's going to set up on me, probably. Jeez. All right, we got our blue, we got emerald green. We got gold. We got interference gold. Ah, Chad's back. Yeah, pick pick another one. We already, we already had the emerald. Any color you want. Yeah, they 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 do. Uh, I actually use these. Though, okay, so the one thing that I did use these for was when I was trying to. Uh, suspend dice those that's what i use for the molds and it's cool because they actually have a dovetail on the bottom already so they're they're good for that problem is i don't really make a lot of bottle stoppers single bottle stopper type things yeah i think we're gonna have to do pearl white here soon the resin's gonna set up on me it's a tough choice, though. I, I do understand. I understand what's going on. Okay. So let's start mixing these guys up, and we'll wait to see what Chad picks. Red gold. I'm not sure what red gold is. Regular gold? Uh, like antique gold? <clears throat> so again, I'm, I forget who was asking about the interference. So that's what it looks like in the cup. It's like, it kind of looks like white pearl, but when the light hits it the right way, it has a gold tint to it. And then if you put it, you know, if you put a thin layer of this, you know, if like if this popsicle stick was black, then it'd really pop. That color would really bounce back. That's how those work. The, the light reflects, you know, it kind of helps to have a, a dark background for the light to reflect. Copper, yeah, that's kind of red gold. 
<laughs> Red gold is different than copper. You're killing me, Chad. I don't even know what co colors we're, we're talking about here. Um, red gold. Uh, like a rose gold? I don't have rose gold. It's kind of a, like copper. Let's, uh, let's, let's have some fun here. Let's, let's mix up. Let's make some, some red gold. We're going to do alumilites, the metallics. We're going to add a little bit of gold and a little bit of copper, and we're going to see what happens. How about that? It's the best I got. A little bit of copper. I'm going to do it a little bit at a time with this, with the regular gold here. And in fact, I actually think, I actually think we're going to use a regular, not a metallic gold. Well, okay. We'll do about a half teaspoon. Well, this is about like so half of an eighth of gold. Let's see what this looks like. I've never done this before. It's probably going to turn out like bronze or something. I don't know. You can always add more copper. Yeah, that kind of made it brown. All right, so that didn't work at all. If you add copper and gold, you get bronze. So we're going to put the gold away and we're going to add instead, I guess you guys can't even see what I'm doing here. I added the alumilite metallic gold and, and copper. So I'm going to add some drops of actual red and we're going to see what that does. Ooh, there we go. There's red gold. That's what you were thinking, right? Red gold. I mean, it doesn't get much more red gold than that, I don't think. Sometimes it's fun to just mess around. Do you want a little bit more red? Let's see if we can... Let's see what one more red does. One more drop. Three drops of red. That's a Lumilite red dye. Ooh. It's even more red goldish. I think we're there. That is red gold. We just made it, guys. All right, so temperature is about 101 on that one. 102. So we're pretty much just about there. We're just about ready to go here, I think. I'm just going to give these guys a little mix here, make sure that sometimes the powders kind of have some chunks that you kind of need to mix in a little bit more. We got our green, emerald green. We got our interference gold. We got our regular gold. This is the Aluma Dust version. Not a bad gold. We got our paradise blue. And we got our red red gold. Copper. I think that's not too bad. All right, so I think we're ready. Let's just pour these guys. I think we can do it. Trying something new. I'm just going to pour one stripe in the middle over and over. I don't know if I've ever done that before. Who knows what's going to happen? And again, I don't, I don't really need to fill these up all the way necessarily. Those chunks of wood are, are very thick. They're like inch and a half thick. So if I fill it up, fine. But for pen blanks, I don't really need to fill these up. If we end up getting it filled, the resin filled all the way to the, the top there, then I may, we may just make some one and a half inch blanks. I may cut them differently but I would typically cut these into pen blanks. 
uh, with this mold. close to, to fill it up. I don't know. We might be able to fill this thing. We can make some kind of handle blanks out of these or something. We can still make pen blanks out of them, I guess. It's kind of an interesting mix of colors that's shown. I don't know if you guys can see this very well. Got all kinds of craziness going on, though. But I think red gold is stealing the show. That's the one. All right. We made it. It's looking pretty cool. It's got all kinds of... And so we'll have to kind of see what this actually looks like when we demold it and cut it up. Pouring it that like I just did. I didn't do anything. That was no frills. But look at these, the ends. See how there's like fan, it's like fanning the colors out. Kind of interesting. Just never know. You never know what kind of weird technique or lack thereof will produce something kind of cool. All right, so, oh, I just dumped my, <laughs> stir sticks down, oh my God. Oh, oh well. Clean up aisle seven. All right, we got that thing. Come on, there we go. Woo! It's getting hot in here. The rainbow, yeah, it is kind of rainbowy. Yeah, how do you like that red gold, Chad? I just went with it. I, I, I figured, why not? Seemed like a good red gold to me. Let's see here, let me put my die away real quick so I don't get that all over the place. Put my little spoon away, pick up my, I got all kinds of stuff. I totally knocked my entire stir stick cup over. So, <laughs> oops, that's what you get for having stir sticks hanging out. So anyway, guys, we'll have to see how these things turn out. So for anybody that's kind of not sure what's going on. So we, we use the Lumalite Clear Slow Set and so that resin, um, I would probably leave these in the molds for, or in the pressure pots. The, the smaller three blank ones, realistically, you know, it's 75 degrees in the shop right now. I could pull those in two hours and they'd be fine. They'd be, they'd be you know, hardened up, everything would be fine. Um, typically though, when it's a little bit cooler in my shop, like 68 is kind of like three quarters of the year. It's, it's, it's kind of sits around 68 degrees in my shop. I would probably leave the three blank molds in for three hours just to make sure. And then the, the six blank molds, you know, that's, that's a good amount of resin. So um, that, that I just pull in two hours. Uh, and then the way that resins work, so, you know, you can pull it out in what I call the demold time. That's when you can pull it out of the pressure pot. It's fully hardened up, but then you technically have to wait about five days with the Lumalite Clear for it to fully cure. Now, technically, you can start cutting it up. You could even start turning it and doing stuff with it, you know, machining it, um, like, right away, you know, realistically. But over the course of the, those five days, it's going to continue hardening slightly more uh, until, you know, the end of the five days, it's fully hardened to, the, to its maximum hardness. And I think the most important thing is you can get over there and start turning the stuff probably the next day, uh, you know, give it a day or two, you could turn it, but the, where you're gonna run into issues is when you're trying to polish it, if you, you know, if you literally pull it out of the pressure pot, go turn it and then try and polish it, it's, it's not gonna polish, it's, it's too soft. So you wanna wait for that five days for it to fully harden up. Uh, now, one video that I'm gonna be working on pretty soon is another way to kind of cheat the, the, the full cure time is you can post cure it in an oven, like basically bake it for longer. Um, and so I'm gonna do a little bit of research. It's not something that I do personally, uh, but I'm gonna do a little research and get something going uh, for, you know, if you really need to get things going, you know, like, like same day type thing, um, post curing may be, uh, may be very helpful for you, so. Uh, that'll be coming down the road. I'm going to do, it'll be kind of a simple, quick video, but I'm going to do a little bit of uh, research on that, make sure I know exactly what I'm talking about, and then I'll, I'll get that up. Uh, but don't forget, uh, this Sunday is going to be the sphere. Uh, so, you know, we had the, 
let me go grab some of these guys. And I, I think next Friday, this is what we're going to be doing on the live stream. We are going to do have a little bit of fun with man-made burls. So uh, if you haven't seen the video, I made the, the silicone mold to make little fake burls. Um, so Sunday, the video, so I already have that video up of making the mold for these. Um, Sunday's video is going to be casting one of them and then turning one into a sphere. And so I think next week we'll probably, I have a few of these guys already made up. And so I think we'll just cast these guys next Friday and have some fun with it. Kind of extend the, the faux burl fun. Uh, but that video will be up on Sunday. I think it's going to be a pretty good video. And the, the thing turned out really good. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, anyway, uh, is there anything else going on? I don't think so. Let me stop real quick, see if there's any, how did I make the red gold? I, I used copper um alum alumilites metallic copper alumilites metallic gold and then i added red a, a little tiny bit of the the alumilite metallic gold and then red dye <laughs> so it was kind of off the cuff let's see the aussies are cheating at scrabble let's see here Yeah, we don't have any humidity here, so there's none of that stuff. I think that the shop, my shop is probably like 10%, something like that, uh, which really is quite nice if you're doing casting. Very nice. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm excited about the rainbow. Uh, did I put those things away? I put them. Um, these were all... Um, couldn't think of the name They're, these are all divine pigment colors so that's actually this is the interesting thing is so the top looks like this and it's kind of the thing is the surface is rougher technically when you turn it it's going to be something on this spectrum nice and shiny and, and kind of crazy with super vibrant colors and then this one was a, um, a glow in the dark had to go with the glow in the dark and then this one is that spacey stuff so my micro starlight glitter in uh, black resin. And then I also added a little bit of white pearl to the tops of this. It's, it's kind of an interesting thing. Once, I, once these get cast, they're, they're going to kind of take on a slightly different look than just sitting here. Uh, but I might make one or two more of those and we'll, we'll cast some of those things up, uh, I think, on Friday next week. But I think I, uh, hopefully you guys will like the video of making the sphere. It's, it's a pretty good video. And, and like I said, the piece turned out pretty good. So be looking for that on Sunday, and I guess that's about it. So next week we'll probably do something. Um, actually, I have a project. So I, I'm, I'm having to, there's no way that I can do these the three uh, live streams a week. I'm, I, I'm starting to get really bogged down, so you guys probably noticed that I haven't been doing Mondays. So depending on how the schedule works out, we'll do two of them. So next Friday we'll do the casting, probably make those burls. Uh, the other day, though, I have a fun project uh, in mind uh, with some, some fun stuff from Turner's Warehouse. So um, be looking for that one. It'll be kind of a fun, simple project uh, on either Monday or Wednesday. So keep your eyes peeled on Facebook and Instagram, uh, and I'll let you guys know when I'm going live next week. So I guess that's about it. Uh, let's see here. Just making sure that I'm not missing anything here. I don't think so. So I will see you guys on, let's see, I, I don't like I said, Monday or Wednesday. And uh, again, make sure to check out the, the video Sunday and uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the video. So I'll see you guys on the next stream. Have a wonderful evening.